um, I would be worried if everybody across the board was like, yeah, that was a good movie. It's much more exciting to me when you get, you know, um, a group of people who are like coming up to you and, and really, really excited about it and you know it's going to be something that they're having their DVD collection. And then there are other people who walk out just, I mean, literally saying that was the worst movie I've ever seen. Having those two extremes to me is, you know, is the mark of uh, the type of movie that I want to make, so. My name is Ryan Johnson, and I'm the writer and director of Star Wars The Last Jedi. I was four years old when the first Star Wars movie came out. I remember my dad putting me in the car to see it. I don't really remember watching the movie when I was four, though. Because when, when you're a kid in the 70s, you don't actually see the movie that often. Like, you're, you maybe get to go a couple times in the theater, but there was no home video, so mostly what you had were the toys. That meant that there's this very hardwired emotional connection because the first stories you're telling in your own head is in that world with those characters. I don't know, it sounds cheesy to say it, but I did. I walked on the Millennium Falcon set and just out of nowhere felt, you know, tears coming into my eyes. And a big lump in my throat. It wasn't actually because I was remembering the movies, it was because I was thinking back to sitting in my backyard with my, you know, Millennium Falcon toy. Ryan has written a story that's unexpected but right. Some of the stuff that happens, people are going to be like, oh my god. Even though I think I know it all, they throw things at me story-wise I never could have imagined. And even though everybody knows that it's the second in a trilogy, it feels like its own thing. Also with the characters that we know and love, we're seeing their lives change. I'm hoping it'll be a little shocking, but I'm hoping it'll feel real and honest. It's about family, and that's what's so powerful about it. And then there are other people who walk out just, I mean, literally saying that was the worst movie I've ever seen. Having those two extremes to me is, you know, is the mark of uh, the type of movie that I want to make, so. I'm a really lazy writer. This is not going to go the way you think. Mark specifically has had a lot of time to think about where he would want the character of Luke Skywalker to go and what he'd want it to be. For some young schnook to come and drop a script in his lap and say, now it's this, you know, it's, it, 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 of course the answer was not gonna be, oh great, fine. You know, by, by the time we got to shooting, not that he totally agreed with everything, not that he was like, okay, I see it now, you're right, but we'd both spoken our piece and dug into it so much that he understood, I think, where I was coming from and he decided to trust me. Movies. Um, it's like w watching a master magician do a card trick where they kind of distract you so that your brain just accepts that and gets over it and gets into the story. And that's why I, um, you know, I've, 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 I've said a few times, it's, and it's really true, the first Terminator I think is a, a genius script and it, the way that it uses time travel, yeah. I really took as a template where it, it uses it to set the situation up and then the situation and the character drives the movie all the way to the end. Is um, uh, He feels like he's trapped in a story that somebody else has written for him. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's something that I can, you know, um, I think all of us can relate to. I know I can relate to in my life. You always get to some point in your life, whether it's, you know, in a, a crappy job that you're just going to because out of habit or a relationship that's kind of, you know, just going mm -hmm. on and on that's, that's not good, um, where you kind of stop a moment and you take stock and you think, you know, did I, did, did I write this story that yeah. I'm living? I feel like I'm a, playing a character in right. something that, I, you know, a play that I don't like, I guess, you know. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, that's kind of the situation blooms in at the start. So that was something that I, I that was one of the very early things that, that um, motivated me to create this thing, was using it as a vehicle to explore for myself the connection between storytelling and, and living our lives, you know, and right. how it's a good thing, how it's a bad thing, how it can help us, how it can trick us up, trip us up, you know. So. Right, interesting. Um, I also wanted to see sort of... Um, 
spinning off of, uh, of that, of what you're talking about a little bit, is what, what, did you find it complicated for you to, uh, to to flesh out the full story and the con element of it? Was like, you know, mm-hmm. it seems pretty complicated to develop this into something where like, you know, this plays out in this way, and yeah. we don't know certain reveals until they get revealed. Was it was it complicated for you to, to um, map that out? Well, I mean, it's complicated, but that's that. On the other hand, that's. Um, for whatever reason, that's an element of, of storytelling that I feel really comfortable with, the plotting and, and um, the twists and turns. And, they, um, you know, not that I'm, I mean, I'm, you know, I work hard at it and I'm trying to get better at it each time I do it, not that I'm great at it or something, but that's something that I feel very confident doing. Mm-hmm. The, the thing that was much more complicated and much harder for me was the character stuff, actually. And that's, um, and that was kind of, you know, the marching orders I gave myself with the script was trying to make a character-based con man as opposed yeah. to a plot-based con man movie, right. um, which is tricky because oh. in a con man movie, you're, the audience is trained to not trust the characters. Right, right. And so setting out with the goal of getting the audience to emotionally invest in these people, oh. you know, is was an interesting challenge. Yeah. Um, so that for me was where I, I felt like it was I tried to really stretch the most was um, trying to make you know a love story work, trying to make characters that lived and breathed on the screen trying to make, you know, right. relationships <clears throat> that you can buy into, to the point where that's where the eventual payoff comes from, as opposed to a right. plot twist, you know? Right. Uh-